on site. Got the wood for the bats. Just putting them up now. As you see, I just put a border on the top, border on the bottom. Uh, and then I'll be able to first put the crown up, put these in like so. And I measure, measure my height from here, 32 and 3 quarters, nail that center up. Once I nail that center, boom, boom. Uh, then just make your ends up to that height, put the bottom piece in. Same story, bottom piece nice and tight. Put it in and just push this tight and nail it. And then you just measure your stickers and they should all be the same, just about. Got them all cut and they should all be the same roughly uh 27 and a quarter if you got these all right uh from the beginning and you just find one somewhere because of the crown so this one's a little tight for some reason it should fit like that all right just cut my backs they should all be within 27 and a quarter if you got all your measurements right with this top board and the bottom board um and then you just want to fit them real snug like that and don't nail them one at a time get them all up first because they may be offset left or right a little uh, as long as you cover that gap that's fine so get them all oh, that one can be trimmed <clears throat> she's snug you don't want to make it so it jacks it up though come on baby don't make a fool out of me all right, so I'm gonna take a blade off of that because it loosened that one. But I got these little jigs I made that are seven inches, so this lets you know where to be when you go to nail, you know? So start on your end, and uh, so like I said, you don't nail none of these one at a time. So first get your measurement off your beam right here. Plumb it up, make sure it's plumb. Once it's plumb, then you know you could, you could uh, nail that. Grab the gun. This one's good to go. Now I made these jigs here. Put these in. I'm trying to do this one handed. Hang on one second. So I made these. Let me set you up here. These little jigs. Just tap this like that. Put the other one in the bottom, tap it. That's your seven inches. Then you know you're good to go. So on and so forth. And that's how I do it. All right. All right, I'm getting her. So here's a little tip that I just found out, too. Seeing that I screwed these uh, boards on and not brad nailed them because they were so cut but you could adjust your screw say like this one was like that see the gap there just lower your take your screw on a little bit shut that gap till that touches that's going to make that look a lot better and your trim board a lot better when you go to put everything on all right guys pump sprayer constant water seal just did uh it's coming out really good i did the whole bottom i did 90 percent of the ceiling just simple easy i didn't know it would be this easy with a pump sprayer. Just simple fan it in. Simple dimple, that easy. Boom, bada boom, bada bang. And this stuff really doesn't smell, but I'm wearing a mask anyway. I'm sure it's not good to breathe. But uh, I just got this one corner to finish and I'm gonna get on it. All right. Got it all sprayed. It's coming down on the camera, so that's why I couldn't show it. It was clearing all the lens. But it uh, makes a difference. This brings out the tones, and it gives it just a, the right amount of sheen. It keeps the wood looking newer, uh, so the UVs don't darken it like 
those two by fours, you know, those they're 30 years old, but they will get an amber color all wood with the UV. Uh, I guess tomorrow sheetrock. We'll start sheetrocking because uh, everything's ready to go on that point. Uh, I got wire, all my wires are done. Yeah, we could sheetrock. So I'm gonna sheetrock all this tomorrow. Upstairs and this. See you tomorrow. Yeah, back on site. Sheetrock day. Went down, got the sheetrock. Home Depot got rid of the plastic bags. Back to brown. Um, all right. Going in well. I'm actually super stoked to check it out. So yesterday got everything sealed as you saw. Uh, sorry it was down in the last video on this phase. I just uh, battling sickness. The kids got the flu and they got me sick too. So feeling better today. Um, <clears throat> what we got, four inch screws for this. Check these bad boys out. Cause we got the two inch foam so it's actually working out really well and i'm just screwing them in just with the regular impact not my sheetrock gun because they're so big and just taking my time uh let's get this piece cut and thrown in Mark your uh, stuff. You know they're right about there. Just dimple those in just a bit. So just grab the paper. Push on. All right, got the corner in. Got the corner. Little update. All that's in besides that corner down there. All this. Gonna put this last piece in here. Just drilling a hole here for the electrical. Get that in, get the wires out, then I could cut the box out after. Hang with me. Come on. Up on up. This is where we got it. Alright. Alright. Open that hole a little bit more. Get that screwed in. I gotta take that panel back off, get the sheetrock behind there, but I gotta take it off and take a piece of foam out, put some more wood blocking behind there because I didn't do that. Only got a two by four for blocking back there. I wanna put at least a either two by six so I could put two screws in that. Other than that, I'll get this whole bottom in before lunch. And uh, yeah, excited. All right, hit my goal, lunchtime. Got all the whole bottom in the, the bottom floor got one little piece up here to nail it to get in but i'll grab that after i eat mr boss made some homemade pizza so oh yeah all about it get a couple more screws in this one call it lunch time nice yeah let's see what we got all right the whole bottom floor and don't mind the mess in here <laughs> got the peak all rocked the top sides rocked all this whole bottom floor is rocked i just showed you a little bit ago just got that up there got an eight footer cut out the window and i put the little piece in the top oh yeah and those two sides right there. Dang it. Forgot about it. Thought I was further ahead. It's not taking uh, too long, but you know, this took a little more time because I had to do everything off the ladder. But uh, yeah, 
It's coming. All righty. It's dark outside because it's getting late. But it's done. Except for, I keep saying except for. I left that piece out intentionally because I got two outlets to run. Light switch for up there on the three-way and uh, a box. And then uh, I'll bang that in tomorrow. And uh, yeah, it is going to be mud time. Time to tape it up. I'm going to flat tape all these uh, right to the beam. All this is going to get flat taped, you know. So it's nice, perfect seal. Looks nice. Looks like they're built in. Same thing with all these. That's why I left these going back in and notched them out. Instead of, instead of putting the beam to the sheetrock, it just looks fake. This will be flat taped in and it will look real. That beam will look like it's going in there. Bada boom, bada bang. All right, next morning. Excuse the mess in here. A little messy. It was tired sheetrocking this thing last night. Didn't have a chance to vacuum or clean up. Just starting the taping. Ah, simple, easy, first things first. Put your mud. Let me get you here. Put it on the corner of the trowel. Hit all your uh, nail holes first. I just go around and hit all the nail holes. That's always my first step. If you have a little paper like that, take the end of your, your uh, trowel and hit that... Uh, paper down to get all your nail holes first at least i do like that that's that got to be drawn in a little bit more if it's cover doing that on the first hit like that it's not deep enough <clears throat> so i'm gonna draw that one in but as you see i started taping first hit then the rest of uh this gets all flat taped, which I'll show you in a second. All right, so when flat taping here, if you're really messy, I suggest putting some tape against the beam, even though you could wash it off if it's clean. Backside of the knife, always scrape clean on your hawk. So when you do this, you're not getting the mud on that. You wanna tuck all your mud in into that joint. So if the mud was on the back of this trowel and I do that, you're gonna get mud all on that beam. So tuck that all in, give it a nice healthy coat. And we'll show you how to tape it in two seconds. Once I get to the top here. All right, once you got a nice healthy coat on there, a little bit wider than the tape, run your tape. And again, I'm not a, I don't do this for a trade, but they do it. You're just gonna run this tape right tight to your beam. Get it right in, like so. Run, it, run your knife right down, hold a little pressure and pull the tape. Needs a nice square edge. Now you see how that's nice and tight. Bring it on in. See how she's tight to there? Then you're just gonna run this nice and gently. You don't wanna push too hard, because you'll wrinkle the tape the first the first pass. Nice and easy just to set that mud. You see how nice that's gonna look? Run it right up, right on up. Beep, beep, beep. And now again, we're gonna have wood from here to in there, so up here doesn't matter. It doesn't make. And if it, you get a little bubble, you put a little more mud under it like that. So now I'm gonna squeegee it out, a little more pressure. All right, and that's your first pass on your tape. If you can see, it's gonna look awesome, right? It is gonna look awesome. All right, got the heat pumping. Everything's flat taped down in the whole bottom level, all the way around, all the way around. I'm gonna get on the ladder now and do this peak. All right, all right. Everything is taped, first coat. Got it all up here, got my outlets in. Uh, corner's all done. Everything's looking good. Gonna crank the heat up, let it dry until tomorrow. All right, next morning, had the heat and the fan blowing all night, it dried real well. Started putting the second coat on this section. Uh, and I'll just give you a couple tips on that. So on your second hit, 
I use a wider trowel. Let me clean this off real quick. Second hit, before you start hitting, take your trowel and scrape away all the high spots, because if you don't, you'll have issues. What will happen is you'll have these little tiny burrs that will get on, get in the mud here, and they'll leave trails down, down the finish when you go to tape, and I'll show you that in a bit. Like if I left that piece up here, didn't, didn't scrape, well you can't see, that piece there, didn't scrape that away, what happens is, You'll get, you know, you go like this, and then there'll be a line right in the mud, and you won't ever get that out. So the, once you start getting that, clean that mud, that trowel right clean again, and get that piece out, because it'll keep, it'll keep going. <sighs> just scrape away every, oh, just scrape away everything. Clean your beam wire, I got it on there. And then the second coat will look like this. It'll be a lot smoother, nicer. And you know, you could say, you know, if you're real good, you could get away with two coats. I usually do two, sometimes three. Uh, it all depends on what you're taping. Uh, but that looks pretty good. I mean, I should be able to sand that and that'd be good. And you know, it's feathered out into here enough. And you use your edges, you know. That's, that's why I got a knack for, uh, you know, plastering because I'm a concrete finisher. So I know the edges of the trowel, where to put it. And even sometimes like up there where I got multiple seams, um, a beam's going across there so I really don't make, but I'll take my concrete Marshalltown trowel and, and I'll plaster this whole thing on my third coat right here. I'll, I'll span from here to here and plaster this whole piece to feather that out really well. The big trowels work awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's coming along and uh, I'll show you a hit real quick. All right, load your trowel right up with mud. Keep the one side spick and span. Get it on there like this. Go the opposite way to the beam. Then once I get it manageable, I will take it right tight like that and go off the beam. Make sure that's a tight fit. And if you had mud on there, you're going to get it on the wood. So that's why it's very important to keep that clean. But you want to get enough in there like so. And get it get it out here too because that's gonna be your feather point so i'm getting and i'm trying to do this one-handed and like backwards but it's the only way i can get a close-up so once i get it like that then i go from the top make sure your edge up here is clean and put pressure on out here and just float float this edge like so, and you see how it's starting to ripple? It's because I'm hitting the wood. So the first hit, it's gonna do that, and you see how it didn't hit there? Fill that. So it just tells me I don't have enough mud in those spots that it's rippling, and... So it usually takes two times of doing this. And then go again. A lot smoother. And then come back up. Oh, like a so. Still got a little ripple in there. I'll play with that, but it just shows you. And if I had little pieces in there and didn't clean, there it goes a little bit better. A little bit better. You'll see that. Um, another th thing I'd like to point out is over here where I already hit. See how it's bubbling? That's because there's no mud under that tape. So it's like a blister on your skin it's always even the next hit it will still pop so when you see that you got to cut that open see i just cut that open i cut that blister open cut that tape get mud under there like so sorry i was pointing in the wrong direction get mud under that tape now come back to it seal it up and that blister will be gone and you just have to do a little fixing on the next hit. And I uh, got another one there. Just gonna cut that open and fix it. And you'll get that. But you gotta you gotta pay attention to that and fix that right away. So I just added a little bit more mud and you see the ripples go right away. Nothing worse than sheetrock. And I, I, I don't like sheetrock and I don't like, uh, and these are my nail holes. That usually takes two hits. I don't like uh, the hanging or the taping, the first coat, but the second coat, 
And the third coat, I love. It's, it's you know, the finished coats are awesome, you know, and I think that's because I'm a concrete finisher and it just reminds me of that. And uh, I just get, it relaxes me for some reason doing the this, this coat. And besides hanging and first coat, there's actually a worse step than that and that's sanding. So the better you get your second and third coats, the less sanding you will do. So it's very important to take time and don't rush it. And you know what I mean? Look, look at my floor, how clean it is. There's no splatters, no nothing. My first, you know, I don't see rock at all or tape, whatever. Um, but I do my own projects. But when I, I remember when I first started, I had more mud on the floor, slipping off the trowel and this and that. You just learn techniques over time and uh, it, it, it comes out good. So this is, again, the second coat. And I'll, I may sand this tomorrow, or I may just, and then just do a little touch up with a third coat, uh, if there's any imperfections. But other than that, I'm liking what I see. All right, I got it all hit all the way down, the whole bottom floor. I still gotta do this section and these walls and that, but I'm gonna let this bake and just turn on the heater. Turn on the fan, let it bake for a few hours. And uh, I'll come back and I'll re I'll hit all that stuff. All right, next morning, everything is dry, looking good. Uh, just did a test sand right here, and it is nice and nice. What I like to do is use a lamp like this, and it shows all the imperfections when you do this. And you can see I got a little bit of ripple right, right there. You can't see that with a regular, say, a, say an LED light. That looks great, you know? So you gotta really use a light like this, like a lamp shade. Just take a take a shade off a lamp and just go around and you'll, that's what your natural light looks like. And you go under, oh, I'm gonna unplug it. And you go, hang on. And you go under and you could, then you could really see all the imperfections when you do that after you sand. Um, but the sanding obviously is dusty, so I'm gonna show you a quick clip of that. Put my mask on. And go down here. I just use this. It's a two, a fine and a little heavier grip. Put the light around. So basically, I take the rough edge first and I just give it a quick, a quick hit. It will leave those marks in there. So you don't want to go too much on this because it's kind of really coarse. So once I do that, then I take my fine, and just do nice little circles and you see how it's blending in? It's like that, you can see, now you go like this and it's transparent, you know? So once you get all that, I run it right down the edge this way, run it up this way. Do that two, three times. And then give it a nice circle all the way up. And that, uh, that looks great. And the same thing here on these nail holes. Start on the outside, like this. Work your whole perimeter in. If you start on the inside first, you might mess it up. It won't look right. Start on the outside and blend it in and give it a, just like this. And that's done. All right, let's see what we got. All sanded down. Put a couple skim cuts. Remember the beam's going across here so I didn't have to finish that right away. Ooh, we're all fogged up here. Hang on. So it was outside. All right, so right here, are the beams going across, so I didn't have to really go too crazy on that. But everything is sanded and nice. Um, not a light. You can see everything. You just want it to go transparent and, you know, so you can see through it. Just about so you can see the paper, but not really, you know. Fix that spot up there that bubbled, skimmed it. That will dry out perfect. Uh, this is the color that the wife seen that she uh, knows I'm painting now all of a sudden we got to paint the dining room 
So she picked that out for the dining room, but I wanted to do the same color. This is like, uh, I don't know, it's called, whatever, I don't even know. It's like a gray and a beige, it's called grayish, all right? It's too gloomy, I don't like it for in here. I'm gonna go, I don't know, maybe like a burgundy, a little, a little uh, red tonish, you know? That would look good with the beams and my office furniture is a kind of a that color cherryish so everything's all sanded up there um next step is paint all right today's an exciting day color day now bear with me it's dark at first but it does pop it's not dry yet i just started doing this uh miko couldn't come today so he wants to come tomorrow but you i can't wait i had to get some color on the walls i'll let him paint upstairs but I'm getting this in. Um, turn on the light in here. At first it was dark, but it's really, it makes the beams pop and it makes this tin gonna really pop underneath. Um, when I was gonna do the gray, everything was blah. So I'm like, color's where it's at. So I'm cutting in here. Really tedious cutting in on these beams, you know? You don't, cause this red, I already got a little bit on the beam. And even though these are sealed, <laughs> They don't, it sucks right in. It doesn't want to come out. And uh, I'm going to have to sand a little bit on it where I got it. But cutting in nice and slow. Going to keep doing that now. Got just a little cut in brush in my paint. Let's do some cutting real quick. See what I could do. Load that brush right up. Swab it. And I'm not a painter, but... I am today. Just take your time and go real slow, steady, steady, steady. And just run that bead, just like a weld. Huh? What do you think of that, painter? I'm gonna get the rest of these beams cut in and I'll give you a little time lapse of me painting the wall. Back on the project. Galvanized metal roofing. <clears throat> Yesterday, finished uh, all the first coat of painting. I'll, I'll put the second coat after all the construction's done so that will have a nice, clean look. But uh, there's the two-tone, as you see, with the beams. Or against the beams. Um, it's creamy mushroom, it's called. And then the bottom is called spice. Isn't that so nice? All right, so I just started mocking this up to see how it was gonna look. Uh, and I think I really like it. And again, 
then the other beams go across here, cover all that, you know, and that's gonna look really, really nice. So, I got the rest of it. I got one outlet or receptacle I gotta put in here. I gotta try to, cause I'm gonna have a LED light here. Just so when I'm reading prints over on this section, uh, is enough light under here. But that's on the docket. Let's get to it. All right, got the tin going in. <clears throat> Just cutting this with a skill saw of a regular wood blade. It's working actually really good. Wear glasses, wear earplugs, cause it's loud. And it does throw a little shade or a little shards of metal, but not nothing crazy. Uh, just laying out my screws every foot so they all match. And just taking my time using a dead man. It's tough to do by yourself, but I, I just use a dead man and, and then you end up getting it. Once you get the first layout going, it's pretty easy. Regular, uh, regular screws. Just regular screws with a little uh, rubber gasket, washer. That's the same thing you do for a roof, you know. But it's looking good, it's easy. Obviously I'm gonna have some touch up with the paint because I'm hitting the wall. Like in here, I'll probably put a trim board, maybe a one inch, it'll cover up all that and it'll actually finish it pretty nice. Everything's tucked in under here like I want. Um, and it's gonna, let, it's gonna work out perfect. The piece, this was just a mock-up piece. I'm gonna slide this over to here. Then the little piece that's here is the extra piece that's cut off here and it works out good. So I won't have any waste. Get one more panel on. It's looking nice. Get one more panel on and I gotta mess with that outlet. All right, I described with a permanent marker and then I use a uh, rubbing alcohol which is right there to take off that it won't come off unless you use rubbing alcohol all right I'll show you how this gets cut use my cheap Ryobi saw for this stuff I don't want to use the good one Just double check measuring your end in case you gotta open up an eighth or so. Mine's 54 and a half both ends, so it's running nice. Cause you got a little play in here. You have to cheat it just a bit. You don't have much, but you can cheat it just a tiny bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
people. Got this looking good. Got my outlet. I put my wires up there and tucked them up. And then I'll cut this out after. And I put an outlet right there for that light. Um, gonna have a little trimming to do right here. With my seven inch grinder, my metal grinder. Just pour it up. A little bit, I'll just trim that up. <laughs> Not a big deal. Two more pieces, two more long strips and then two short ends and then this thing's a wrap for the metal roof. I'm actually pretty impressed the way it came out. Uh, you know, I could have done things a little different here and there. As you go, you learn, but doing it one one guy, it's tough to hold these pieces and pull them straight. I thought I had this sickness beat, but the whole family's sick and they got me sick. I'm losing my voice now. Got a fever coming on. Not good. Hate the insect. I got a big uh, electric line next week. That's all scheduled. I'm supposed to start another house foundation or a big addition. So hopefully they, I get rid of this. Uh, I'm, I'm on airborne now, but uh, whatever. Enough about me. Back on the project. Give you a quick update here. What a week it's been. I've been on my back all week. Hopefully I look eight pounds lighter because I am like lighter. I had the flu for five days. I was on the couch on my back, getting sick, got the whole works. The kids brought me down. So we're all better now though. We're on our, this is my first day back and I feel <clears throat> a lot better. Than yesterday let's just put it that way i feel like I and mean, obviously i'm not 100 percent but i feel i feel better uh got the tin in the rest this morning started putting these trim boards back up you know it's just a process uh i don't even know if you guys saw this painted this is all one coat i uh, can't remember if i told you um that trim board don't like it i just put that up there it just, you know, that I thought that would look good to finish this around, but it doesn't to me. That's getting ripped back down, then I'm gonna, it's, it's only tacked in, so let me just take that down now. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Everything, all, all the wood is shrinking up so bad that it's, uh, what I had cut before, <clears throat> necessarily work anymore so like all these pieces were already pre-cut <clears throat> but they've been in here for two weeks so they even shrunk more than from what the kiln shrunk them and it's like are you kidding me so uh anyways this i like this wall continuous on its own and this like i said was never plastered so now i gotta hit this all up and uh i just gave it a one coat you know because i knew the beam was gonna be there but now I have to like really true it up and finish it up at the, cause there's, there's a big dip right here. So I'll take my big 16 inch uh, concrete trowel and feather that out all nice. Um, and like I said, there's just always just things that change. You know, this thing's not done on a print or anything. It's all in my head. So like here, these, these bat, I don't even know what these were. If these were bats or not, I don't know. I think I ripped these down, but uh, I'm gonna be putting these here to finish this out, like so. And then that will give that a clean look and it'll recess this in a little bit better and give it a bolder look, which that will go f continuous around here, like so. And that's gonna finish that, you know? I mean, it ain't a bad look here. I, I, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I like that too. So I. I <coughs> Kind of mind boggled on what to do. Just playing it back and forth. But I knew I definitely didn't like that board up there because that broke that ceiling up and made everything look separate. I want this thing to, it gives it a better uh, feel without nothing there. So that's where I'm at. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, feeling a little bit lighter on my feet. Eight pounds lighter. Hold your end up, buddy. Get her up. Slide it even a little bit more. Here. You right about there. Hold it even with that board. Hold 
let me uh, put this up, slide it to you. You tiny bit, tiny, right, right there. All right, let's see where we left off. Got some uh, <clears throat> trim done. Got the second coat of paint done. Looking stout. So, let me shut this here. Here's the second coat all up there. Looking good. Got everything uh, trimmed out. Here to hold this tin up. As you see, got an outlet here. Uh, that's gonna come out here with a light, with a pole switch, just to give me bright LEDs pointing down at my desk. When I need the extra light, cable come in here for the internet, modem, I'll put a little thing there, all my receptacles are in. I got, uh, <clears throat> this is gonna be my power, to, like my, I have a desk that comes all the way across and it's an L shaped, it'll take this whole wall up. But then I can put my uh, strip light, or my strip power cord here for all my charging for my GoPros. Drone, etc. USB ports. Got these tops on. I haven't put them. I got them all cut. I just did this now. <clears throat> I'm going to hit them up with the brand nailer. So, got the TV outlet going there. The cable here coming down, which all this, I still got trim to do. Uh, this gets all trimmed out from here to the wall where the paint ends. So, it's just going to be like that across. Uh, that's got to get trimmed and then I got to trim the ceiling and then of course the floor I don't know. I don't know what I want to do for the floor yet Anybody's got any ideas just put them down in the comment below and uh, Also, if you didn't check out the first phase of this video, this is the second phase. There'll probably be three Maybe four because the fourth will be the outside and that's gonna be done in the spring So we'll just keep you posted on that through the regular work uh, but this video I'll upload now, and that will get it gets you the idea of what I got going. The only thing left I got to do before I move in here is the floor, of course, and just the miscellaneous trim pieces that go around, which isn't a big deal. Uh, then it's then I can move on in. I hope you got to get the heat and everything that's going to go on this wall. They're going to get the wall mount uh, heater, propane that comes here. Got to build something in here, maybe a closet, I don't know, or a pull-down shade to cover all this mess, but we'll figure out something there. Uh, yeah, everything is coming together. Obviously, I got to trim that window up there um, and trim the door. So the door is not trimmed out yet, and, I, and once I trim out the door, then I can put these top rail pieces like these ones. Um, but yeah, simple and easy. Everything just went super tight, super nice. Gonna get them on like so. Push them down, push them in. Couple brad nails. Hold it tight. Nice and nice. So I'll go around and do that, get the rest of those on. I do like the colors, I think it come out really good. Uh, Cause my desk is like a dark maroon color too. So let me bring in some more natural light. So I think uh, when it's all done, it's gonna look nice and we'll watch this, eight, this wood age. And uh, I'm happy with the tin underneath and stuff, you know, and I could always take that down to get access to my panel box to run wires. If I ever had to do anything else, I do have a three-way switch up there. It goes, gonna go to probably a ceiling fan, uh, which goes to that. So when I have a bed or whatever, a loft up there, um, I can shut the power off up there. And there's also another outlet up there, up on top, top. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, super stoked so far. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. 
And uh, any thoughts on what I should do for a floor in here? I don't know. I'm um, to that point. So thanks, guys.